All right, good morning. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. It's good to see you. So you know by now that today is the World Environment Day. The theme this year is celebrating biodiversity. So let me make something clear here. So currently, we have about 20% of the planet's vegetative surface showing declining trends in productivity and fertility. Losses are linked to erosion and depletion and pollution in all parts of the world. So by the year 2050, Degradation and climate change could really reduce the crop yields by 10% and up to 50% in certain areas. So I'm not talking about all the gibberish here for no reason. We're talking about the things you see every other day. There's a lot of pollution, there's a lot of flooding right now as we speak, and there's a lot of climate change as well. What we're saying is that by the year 2050, productivity of land will go down and we may need to do other things to make sure that we bridge the gap. This is World Environment Day. The theme is Celebrate Biodiversity and joining me now is Ms. Mandisa Mashologu. She's the UNDP Deputy Resident Representative for Programs right here in Kenya. She's in Nairobi, though. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Mandisa. Thank you for having me, Trevor. So let's get straight into it. We are marking the World Environment Day at a time when there's the coronavirus pandemic. One of the first things that comes to everybody's mind is how then does that change the whole aura of the World Environment Day, because now the theme is celebrating biodiversity, but it's happening at a time when people can't even move. No, Trevor, everything that we need to say, I think coronavirus, as much as it's a challenging issue, it's making us to be very aware that nature is what it is. And we only have one planet, and we must make sure that we um, do everything to ensure that we uh, secure the way in which we interact and do everything in terms of our planet. So um, challenging times for all of us, um, I think, Kenya, the continent, and the world has uh, made sure that we address this issue yeah. in a very uh, pragmatic way, um, and also uh, ensure that we do not forget yeah. that we made a commitment to the SDGs, the yeah. Sustainable Development Goals, and we will continue to work towards that. And this is just but a challenge for us to make sure that we, uh, we remember that World Environment Day is important yeah. for us all. All right, and so this, uh, the coronavirus pandemic has been sort of a blessing in disguise, right? Because the carbon emissions has really lowered in terms of travel. No, let's not say it's a blessing in disguise. It's a crisis, and it's a crisis, and we should not take that for granted. We should remember that this is a fundamentally a health issue, but the integrated uh, way in which we had all collectively as uh, as uh, as uh, um, the world have agreed that we must deal with these issues, that um, we, we, we have to ensure that we, 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 um, we make sure that we um, interact and yeah. deal with this in an integrated, um, financially managed, um, um, economically yeah. and uh, fundamental way to 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 make sure that we we don't forget where we want to go okay. at the end of the day. All right, and so now one of the other challenges that we have now is going to be dealing with the masks that we have. In, let's take the context of Kenya, for example, where we are, because now we are estimating millions of masks, at least 40 million people wearing masks at the same time. And then the, the challenge becomes the disposal of those same masks. How do we ensure then that 
we don't pollute the environment based on the, because of the mass that we have, which some of them may actually be toxic. Of course, we, one of the first, you know, first point of call for all of us was to make sure that we deal with this as a, a health issue, to make sure that we are protected. And one of those was to make sure that we have uh, the masks and everything else. And um, very, very proud that within Africa and within Kenya, um, as a hub of innovation and technology and promoting um, small business development, that we have made sure that uh, we can produce masks to protect ourselves as a first line of defense, that is definitely very important. But Obviously, the disposal and, um, and uh, adequate facilities to ensure that um, anything that can further uh, um, protract or, or, in, or um, engage in making sure that um, this uh, pandemic is further dispersed, uh, is, is a priority. So for us as UNDP working collectively in Kenya with the Ministry of Environment, um, we have made sure that under the leadership of our resident coordinator and collective response of the UN, that we're looking at ways in which we can give a first line of the defense and health, health systems strengthening. And the masks are very good in PPEs to make sure that they're available, but also the disposal of those are very, very important. And for us as UNDP Kenya, have been working with uh, our collective partners to make sure that across 13 counties, because we need to make sure that we do get down to the county level, um, that um, we are able to have um, disposable mechanisms, um, quality disposable mechanisms for um, the masks and any other PPEs um, so that it does not exasperate this very challenging issue that we're all dealing with. So one of the best things to do is how much are we investing in that area collectively? Because when you look at plastic disposal, it's another issue. By the year 2050, we know there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish if nothing is done as we speak. And yet, we are still now getting more sanitizers into the market and there's a lot to be disposed, which might still end up in the ocean. So what is the cumulative way in a, a structure in which we can ensure that there's this actual right disposal of this, the, the things that we use during this coronavirus pandemic? I am so proud to be in a country in which uh, His Excellency um, President Uhuru is a champion of making sure that we are working towards, um, you know, 10% um, coverage of um, of, of forestation and also making sure that we contribute to the lower emissions of any challenges um, that can um, um, exasperate our achievements towards the SDGs. And moving back to the question that you asked, is that um, we are working collectively to make sure that we must put um, policies, capacities, and institutions and capacities in place to make sure that we do not um, 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 uh, work in a way in which we can um, uh, put 
more, um, um, you know, um, uh, it's issues in place that can um, work towards um, uh, exasperating the, the issues of climate change and uh, working towards the SDGs. And um, I think it's very, very important that we make sure that we put systems in place for healthcare waste. And we have worked collectively with the Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Health to put systems in place to make sure that uh, we, we look at how we can reduce and ensure that we have the use of technology and digitalization and everything else to make sure that we reduce any other um, um, issue, any other um, issues that can uh, um, exasperate. COVID-19 yeah. as we deal with it collectively. And the other issue that we're currently dealing with as a country is the flooding now. So from where you stand and from the expertise you have, what is the best solution to go around that? Because then there's the issue where, I know you're shaking your head because sometimes it becomes political on that issue when you need to move people to higher ground and they're asking you which ground are we going to. But this is something we're going to be facing as a world for a, for a bit. So what is the best way of going about it? Well, we, we, we cannot say that we have the best solutions, but I think collectively, um, the UN system, not only in Africa, but across the world, we are making sure that we're using the South-South cooperation knowledge networks to ensure that uh, we, we look at the policy issues, the impact, we have on the ground and how we can make sure that this can then that that can be addressed and um, for us in Kenya it's not only about COVID-19 there's COVID-19 we have the floods the mudslides we have the locusts that we have to deal with but everybody is working collectively to ensure that we address the priorities that um, are, are, are impacting on people um, by learning with, by learning from everybody else around and regionally um, to make sure that we can do the best that we can do. And I think one of the critical issues that we need to learn from this is let's get the data. Let's make sure that we can uh, put systems in place and uh, work at the local level um, in terms of the planning and sub-regional, uh, you know, spatial plannings and uh, early recovery systems uh, to make sure that we can have a significant impact. And when we have these critical crises, let's also make sure that resources can be dedicated to the local and sub-national level um, and work with um, civil society organizations and make sure that the private sector can also come in to make sure that we continue to work towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals. Yeah. COVID-19 may be a crisis, but let's not forget that we have made a collective commitment uh, to ensure that we work towards that uh, as whether it's here in Kenya, yeah. whether it's within the cross-border situation.
So as we, as we wind up on this, this year's theme is celebrating biodiversity. Last year in 2019, it was air pollution. But how do we get the community buy-in? Because right now we know in Kenya, even the forest cover is still at 7%, while well, the goal is at 10% minimum. And we've, with 47 million people, if we were to plant one tree each, we would attain it. But how do you get the community buy-in so that people realize that it's upon themselves to take care of the environment, even in their own little way? And this is not just a government issue, because we have enough policies around this issue. It's just the implementation that is lacking. Things, Trevor, I think it's just that we should not sit there saying, you know, we use these words like biodiversity. What does biodiversity mean to you? Um, let's just let people talk about the fact that I want to be able to wake up in the morning, have a meal, be able to be safe be able to walk around my neighborhood, be able to engage with my family. So for me and um, for all of us, I think we should just collectively say that, um, you know, World Environment Day, it's for people, planet, and let's make sure we don't use words that we don't all understand, but just say, Let's just be able to um, wake up in the morning and have a wonderful day. Yeah. So, and finally, from you, on this day, what would you like people to remember? Those who are watching. I would like, I would like people to remember that um, we are living in difficult times, but yeah. we will get through this. We will get through this, and we will get through this together. All right. And just have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you so much for making time for us, Ms. Mandisa Mashologu, UNDP Deputy Resident Representative Programs here in Kenya on the World Environment Day. This year's theme, like we mentioned earlier on, it's celebrating biodiversity. All right. We're taking a quick break here on Daybreak. When we